I don't know if it was a southern thing or maybe it was uh, just a Florida Georgia thing, but my wife and I, we're both from Central Florida, we had a conversation a couple weeks ago about the word lie. For both of us growing up in Central Florida with family roots from Georgia, the word lie was tantamount to a curse word, literally. I mean, um, you couldn't say that someone said, when they said an untruth, you couldn't say that they said a lie. You had to use a euphemism like they said that you know, that was a tale or a story or a fib or something that was less caustic or incendiary. Worst of all was when you were to question the veracity of a statement from an adult, uh, whether that statement was an intentional misrepresentation or just an accident, their first uh, thing, their, their first response was a heated one. They say, you calling me a lie? They get indignant about it. Uh, and that's what they said. They said a lie, not a liar. Now, I know the difference, but they say, we said a lie. You calling me a lie? And then, <laughs> and then he was like, <laughs> you were taking them back. A lot of time has passed since my youth in Florida, but something stirred the memory of the fervor with which that word was received when watching Mr. Brown, the buffoonish character created by Tyler Perry for his stage plays and, and then cinema and later for television. Yes, I watched Lil Brown. <laughs> the actor who portrays Mr. Brown, David Mann, uh, to me, is a very funny dude uh, who connects with audiences through this, just this raw physicality and comedic delivery. One of his trademark lines took me back to my past. He was a lie. Or the, uh, a variation of it when he says, the devil is a lie. That made me think a lot. And that takes us to our anchor scripture for the afternoon. John, 8th chapter, the 44th verse. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your fathers will ye do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. So the title of my lesson sermon today goes back to Mr. Brown and hearkens to my past. The devil is a lie. If I were to make this pronouncement to possibly 99% of modern Christians, I get a hearty amen, second amen, to which they might add the devil is busy and all other manner of statements attesting to the devil's tireless trickery, cunning and wild, all designed to throw us off our game, lead us astray and grease the skids on which we slide into the very pits of hell to burn for eternity. If there is anything Christians can get passionate about, it is the power of the devil. We get our first thoughts on the trickery of the enemy, another name we use uh, for the devil early on in the scriptures. In the third chapter of the book of Genesis, we have the story of the temptation of Eve by the serpent. Genesis 3, 1 through 5 reads, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden, and the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. The serpent was more subtle, meaning he was a slickster. The serpent had game, and he spit it on Eve, and she bought it up into his wrap. Like any pip, he used a mixture of truth mixed with uh, a li taking liberties on the context of that truth to ensnare his victims. They do a Jedi mind trick on you and get you questioning what you know to be true and spinning it and spinning it back in such a way that you end up saying, now, that kind of makes some sense. You begin to think on the misdirection, and before you know it, you are misdirected and doing something you probably would have sworn that you would never do. To Atlanta, shame. It is one of the sex trade trafficking capitals of the world. Just this past month, the creative loathing did a major piece detailing the nature and scope of this predatory crime in the metro area. 
According to the CO report, an underworld of illegal sex work has resulted in hundreds of millions spent on street prostitutes, Korean massage parlors, and Mexican brothels in Metro Atlanta, according to the new report. A study published by the Urban Institute yesterday, that was the, the day that it came out, details the size and inner workings of underground sex work and child pornography in eight major U.S. metro regions, including Atlanta. The others included Dallas, Denver, Kansas City, Miami, San Diego, Seattle, and Washington, D.C. Atlanta's underground sex economy in 2007, the last year for which they had data, uh, was $290 million and ranked atop the eight metro lists. Georgia's capital was one of only two metro regions to grow rather than shrink compared to its 2003 figures and remain much higher than the region's estimated illegal drug and gun trade. Young women and underage girls have been swept up by guile, deception, desperation, and even by force in participating in prostitution, and even in the most heinous cases, coerced into being sex slaves. This abominable trade preys on the innocent and impoverished and those who feel they have no recourse. It is insidious in that it makes the victims feel so devalued that they don't think they have any recourse but to continue to participate. The victims of these crimes are further victimized when they buy into the falsehood that this is their unalterable state and they resign to it. They need to hear and to know that the devil is alive. Every mother and dad needs to instill in their daughters the truth, daughters and sons these days, the truth of who they are and to help them to develop the pride, self-confidence, and self-love that they won't be susceptible to seeking it from another source outside of themselves. They need to know their self-worth and when approached by the okie doke declare, the devil is a lie. I am a child of the truth. For my true students who might think I'm regressing a bit, hang with me for a few and we'll get there. Jesus gave us a formula for dealing with the lies of the devil when he was on his preparatory 40-day fast in the wilderness. You go to Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, you will see that where Jesus was tested by the devil using scripture. As I said earlier, the real slicksters know how to use truth out of context to trip you up. Jesus rebutted the devil with scriptural truth in context and finally just commanded him away. Jesus essentially said, Use a lie and send him on his way. We need to take heed of that example and do the same. Know your truth and declare it as so. The devil is a lie. If you want to excite the modern Christian or really get them worked up, just start talking about the devil. In our comic book worldview of superheroes and supervillains, we have made out the devil to be the arch enemy of God. While they aren't willing to make the devil equal to God, for many, it's pretty darn close. In fact, you probably are more likely to cause more dissension and catch more side-eye looks these days by saying you don't believe in a devil, then you might be saying you are agnostic or probably even atheist. We vested a lot of time and energy in there being a, a devil because it's a protection for us. As the pioneering black comedian Flip Wilson used to say, by way of his character, De Geraldine, the devil made me do it. Because certainly if it wasn't the devil who made us do it, then who was it? Not us, of course. But just who is the devil? Who is the devil? And how did he get elevated to such a position of importance to so many Christians? We have lots of names for the devil. Satan, Lucifer, the enemy, Old Scout. It goes on and on. There's so many names for the devil. And we lump them all together and use the terms interchangeably. But that's wrong. Most of us don't even realize that the scriptures don't even treat the devil as a single entity. 
and translations from Aramaic to Hebrew and Greek and then on to other languages and dialects, the shades of meaning between devils and demons and Satan and the likes lose their position, their precision. Satan was more the title of a being than a name. More the title than a name. Anyone could be a Satan or a deceiver or deceptor, whereas Lucifer referred to a specific being, a fallen angel. Angel fallen from heaven because of vanity and pride. And even that is just an astrological reference to that morning star that rises and then seemingly falls during the day. Lucifer means the light bearer. And in actuality, it was referring to Venus, the planet Venus, the bright morning star that seemingly falls to earth because of vanity. Venus, as you remember from mythology, was the goddess of love, and that represents our baser instincts, the carnal man that, again, if followed, will lead us to destruction and falling to earth, our downfall and our sorrows. So just who is this devil that is lying to us, making us do things. This is the thing that most traditionalists won't own up to. The enemy is us. The devil is a lie. Now, I'm not saying it in the context of how we used to say it back then, how we say it now. The devil is alive, meaning that uh, the devil is full of trickery. The devil will do this and do that and is cunning uses chicanery and guile. I'm saying the devil is a lie. There is no devil. The devil is a lie. This is an out that we have given ourselves to take ourselves off the hook. We lie to ourselves more than anyone else ever could. We like to have someone to blame our actions on so that we relinquish responsibility for the, the consequences of those actions. Like Shaggy, in the face of all evidence to the contrary, we say, it wasn't me. <laughs> Use a lie. The dying devils that we have to deal with aren't red horn tricksters, but the fear and attack thoughts which arise out of error consciousness. Conditioned to look without instead of looking within. The devil of ego. We have to, like Jesus, say, use a lie. Get away from me. Get thee behind me, Satan. The devil of pride. The pride that builds us up, that makes us want to do so much, that builds up with arrogance. That devil of pride. Use a lie. Get thee away from me, Satan. The devil of limited thinking that has us thinking small, thinking small of ourselves, thinking less of ourselves, lacking in self-confidence, self-determination, self-pride, the ability to determine who we are and whose we are, to stand with Neo, with purpose. That's the devil. He's a lie. Get thee behind me, Satan. The devil is a liar. The devil is a lie. Jealousy. Having us looking sideways at somebody else, seeing what they got. As the song say, having us feeling some type of way about that brightly shining. <laughs> and brightly too. <laughs> Jealousy consumes us. But there's no reason when we look at a universe that's full of divine substance that we can create and have what we want. There is no reason to be jealous of what someone else has. The devil is a lie. Get thee behind me, Satan. Anger, that all-consuming rush that has us seeing red and it lights us up and we lose all sense of reasoning. We lose all sense of uh, compassion and anything else. All we can see is, is rage and furor. The devil is a lie. Get thee behind me, Satan. Unforgiveness. The thing that can have us for years and decades in pain. We're holding on to something. And the unforgiveness is not doing anything to the person who we're not forgiving. It's eating us alive. It's a lie. We think that, it's, that we are uh, righteous in our indignation. That we are a right to be upset with this person who 
did us wrong in our own thinking, our own perceptions of it, it's a lie. The devil is a lie. You're a lie. Get me behind me, Satan. Anything that holds us back, anything that prevents us from rising to our highest and greatest good, anything that has us looking at us versus them, separation, division, thinking that we are less than, all those things are lies. Use a lie, Satan. Get thee behind me. The devil is a lie. I want you guys, as I say, the devil is a lie to say, I am the truth. The devil is a lie. I am the truth. The devil is a lie. I am the truth. With conviction, the devil is a lie. Who are you? The devil is a lie. Remember that you are the truth. You are the vessels that possess the truth. Anything that tells you otherwise, anything that condemns, anything that lessens, demeans, demoralizes, devalues, anything that says that you are less than the child of God that you are, it's a lie and do not buy into it. Don't lie to yourself. We're the ones who tell us that more than anybody else. Stop lying to yourself. Know who you are, whose you are, and what you are. The devil is a lie. I am the truth. And so it is.